So for me, uh, when I began this work, um, it was kind of revisiting some themes that I looked at about 22 years ago, actually. And, and that actually, uh, that work, the genesis of that work was really talking about the, the first Gulf War. And my idea with that work that I did in uh, 1990 uh, was to um, kind of think about weapons as real objects that actually had a really palpable uh, quality to them that were made out of real materials that weren't just something that you saw on television. Um, the Gulf War, when it, when it first happened, um, we were all kind of mesmerized by these smart weapons and things were being videotaped and we'd see bombs flying into buildings you know, remotely and drones were just coming online. People were kind of just getting, thinking about the sanitized war that we called it and Colin Powell would talk about the surgical strike and there were ways of sort of thinking about war that were sort of very different from Vietnam, the other war that we had fought as a country in recent memory. And um, anyway, I kind of put that work aside for 22 years. And when the shootings happened at Sandy Hook, um, I, I, w I think like a lot of people in our country, we were really all of a sudden aware that um, it was just kind of a different tone. It seemed, it seemed incredibly um, sad and incredibly, um, familiar at the same time and sort of helpless and hopeless and kind of was really interested in, in domestic violence at that point and violence that was happening in our country but also violence um, in homes and, and violence towards women and, and um, so I really pulled, I, what I did is I pulled out some of those old guns that were, and there's some of these in the show that are actually that old. Uh, the rest of the work I built, I built over the course of about a year. And I, I do a lot of other work in my studio practice, which is public artwork primarily and commission furniture and work for public buildings. And I kind of very quickly saw this as a public art work and that it was complementary to my public art practice and that I wanted to do an installation of this work, this particular work about gun violence in a way that would, would really kind of um, maybe provoke some outrage from people and also maybe um, get them thinking about the proliferation of weapons in the United States and the amount of killings that we have every year um, and kind of the unbridled nature of weapons consumption and violence in our culture. Um, and, it, and not really to, um, to vilify anyone in that, but just to kind of raise a lot of awareness about the fact that this, this all kind of goes on and then something like Sandy Hook happens and someone like me is like, oh my God, that's horrible. Children were shot and killed and it was horrible. But you know, this, this is, th we've been on this trajectory in our country for an incredibly long time and we're a very, human beings are very violent by nature, um, but having easy access to guns and having so many of them, for me, is kind of the whole story that that, that, that just allows so much to happen, so, so much possibility. So, well, I think art, by its nature, visual art, has, is, is pretty marginal. It's been pretty marginalized in our culture because I think um, you know, we, we live in a very consumptive culture of tel television is the, is the is the art form that we're most, you know, used to consuming, and you know, that, I'd say that's followed by, you know, other things like music and and literature, and um, you know, but art, visual art, by its nature, is is kind of, um, I wouldn't say it's a, it, it's responding to those types of media things. So having a video as part of this installation helps put it in context for people. And having media that accompanies it, or stories, or articles that go along with it, it, it allows the whole thing to happen. But I agree, like frequently, a lot of art uh, has been something that sort of happens outside of a mainstream culture, and it 
and we get artists kind of get slotted in in ways where you know you're a graphic designer or a fashion designer or a, um, you know you do you do things to make money or public art is one of those things. I mean, it is it, it can be very um, you know hate, hate to use this word, but but sometimes public art can be really decorative, you know, and you you want a, a piece to go in front of your school or in front of your library, in front of your um, hospital, or and, and you don't always want it to be the most provocative piece. In, fa in fact, quite the contrary. Frequently, the work that I do and that I apply for doing in public art places it tends to be pretty safe and pretty, you know, for the ages, and it, it's not really meant to stir it up so much. Um, but I think art in general, um, by its nature, because it is happening kind of on the edges, it does allow people to do things like mirror social issues, you know, which is what this is about. It's mirroring a social and political issue that is current in our culture. And so I don't think that's necessarily new, but now that like visual art has so many different um, it forms that it takes, you know, um, installation and lots of different media projects. Um, you can really definitely make a pretty powerful statement if you want to.